Hello. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brian Nisbet. I'm the Service Operations Manager in HEANET, and I'm very glad to be introducing and moderating this session. As Ronan said a year ago, a year and a half ago, um, we stood on the stage and talked about our various security services that we're evolving, one of them being the SOC and SEAM service. It's been a very long and very productive 18 months in regards to that service. And, um, sorry, excuse me. And we're now going to talk about that process, the service, the team that's been set up to manage it. We have a contribution from our managed partner, Fox IT, and indeed a case study from the first client to be onboarded to that service, Maynooth University. So uh, we're going to have a, some sessions and then some Q&A after that. Uh, so without further ado, I will introduce Michael Clerken, our Security Operations Manager in HEANET. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Do I have a mic? Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, so yes, uh, my name is Michael Clerken, the Security Operations Manager in HEANET. Um, and I'm here to talk to you uh, about why we've launched this service, uh, what the service is and how it fits into your cybersecurity strategy, and what we've been doing in preparation and in the onboarding of our clients so far. So first, some background and context, which is the why we've launched the service. So as we all know and hear time and time again, there are many cyber threats facing organizations today. In fact, 90% of CISOs report that their organization experienced at least one disruptive attack last year. 83% of breaches are from external actors, and 95% of breaches are due to financially driven attacks. So how do we ensure we prevent these threats to our organization? We can't. And that's where Assume Breach evolved as a cybersecurity strategy. So Assume Breach says that cybersecurity incidents will happen despite preventative security measures being in place. And by adopting this mindset, you can shift focus from solely being on prevention to threat detection and response as part of your cybersecurity strategy. So what do we mean when talking about detecting and responding to threats? Well, a good example to look at, of course, is ransomware, which accounted for almost a quarter of all reported breaches last year and has seen a sharp increase in percentage of all reported uh, security incidents and breaches over the last three years. So this is the Revil ransomware attack lifecycle. And our purpose here is not to step through this, uh, the stages of this uh, attack in detail, but to ask the question, when do most victims of these type of attacks realize what is happening? And the answer, unfortunately, is too late. In the later stages of the attack, when they're impacted, when their files and systems are encrypted and services go offline. The ransom will subsequently be demanded and the organization will face a huge uphill battle in terms of recovery. So what can we do about this? Well, threat actors use tools in the form of TTP, or tactics, techniques, and procedures. And a great many of these procedures have associated signatures which are detectable. The earlier in the attack lifecycle that you can detect and respond, the greater the opportunity you have to disrupt the threat actor. By analyzing alerts and managing the security incident to contain, eradicate, and recover, avoiding the later stage exfiltration of data and avoiding the impact of having your files and systems encrypted. And that is what the SOC and SIEM service enables our clients to do. And that is why we feel this is such a valuable service to our clients in helping them with their cybersecurity strategy. It is important to, to note, however, that this is only one part of the puzzle. We would advocate for a defense in depth approach on the part of the client. For those of you familiar with the NIST cybersecurity framework, this service most significantly contributes to the detect and respond functions of the framework. So that's the why. Moving on to the what, what the service is and what we've been doing. So there's been a huge amount of work on the part of the HEANET project team in getting us where we are today. In Q1 last year, we ran a feasibility study looking at the viability of the service and why it made sense to take a sectorial approach. In Q2, we got approval from our board and from the department to proceed with the service development. 
In Q3, we secured funding from the Department of Education. In Q4, we ran procurement, selecting Fox IT as our managed uh, security services partner. And you'll hear from Lena from Fox IT about the company and their experience of onboarding from the supplier side. In Q4, uh, or, excuse me, early this year, um, uh, my team, the security operations team, was formed, and we launched the service and commenced with, uh, with client onboarding. And in May this year, our first client went live, which was Maynooth University. And you'll hear from Patrick O'Regan about their experience of, of the onboarding and being a client of the live service. So moving on to what the service is and looking at the core service features, 24-7 security monitoring, incident detection, incident response advisory, where guidance is provided on next step uh, containment and remedia remediation actions following a security incident. SEAM, which stands for Security Information and Event Management, where your logs are centrally collected, normalized, and made searchable. In addition to SEAM, there is a network security monitoring component to this service, which involves placement of network sensors on your network to detect anomalous and suspicious traffic. Managed platform, so all components of the uh, shared services platform are managed as part of the service. And again, Lena will talk a little bit more about these components. Threat intelligence is baked in meaning that the detection logic is continually updated based on numerous different threat feeds so that the service evolves with the evolving threat landscape. And finally, reporting and trend analysis, where you can run reports over whatever time frame you wish to specify for alerts generated, cases investigated, and cases reported. So what are the service benefits? Well, first and foremost, peace of mind knowing that your environment is monitored around the clock and that you will be notified of a security event that warrants your attention. For high profile, or sorry, high priority security incidents that generate out of hours, the SOC can contact you immediately or next business day, depending on your requirement. Reduce time to detect and respond. So as we saw with the ransomware example, it's important to detect and respond early to disrupt the threat actor. So cases are reported with notification and reporting times under service level agreement. And you will be notified within 30 minutes of a high priority security incident. Increased focus. So because the SOC do the initial investigation to determine a security incident or conversely a false positive, this means reduced alert fatigue and overwhelm for your teams. Cases are reported with a high level of certainty, meaning that your teams can focus where they need to without sifting through tons of security event data themselves. Reduced likelihood of breach. So because we've got reduced time to detect and respond, and because incident response guidance is provided as part of the service, this means greater ability on the part of your teams to contain and remediate against the threat. Reducing the likelihood of breach and minimizing the impact of security incidents. Reduce barrier of entry. So because of the sectorial approach in the shared services delivery model, this means reduced high upfront costs, complexity, and management overhead associated with managing a complex security platform and the staffing and management of a SOC. And finally, leveraging the power of the community through knowledge sharing and insights and value optimization through continuous service improvement. There is also value add through synergies with other um, HEA net services and data sets that my team has access to and allows us to run threat hunts and issue targeted threat advisories to our clients. So moving on to an operational report, and just looking at uh, some metrics for the service from July through to October this year for clients that have been live with the service. We've had 5.37 million alerts generated of which 393 cases were investigated, of which 150 cases were reported to clients. So I just want to briefly explain what these metrics mean. The alerts at the wide end of the funnel are generated on, based on numerous different uh, log sources and from the network detection and response element of the service, based on known signatures, behavioral-based analysis, and threat intelligence. Through orchestrated uh, alert triage and event correlation then, you had cases automatically created for the SOC to investigate. You've cases reported then where the SOC's investigation concluded with the uh, determination of a security incident. So to me, these metrics really show the value of the service and demonstrate some of the uh, benefits that we've talked about. At the wide end of the funnel, you've got high volume, 
a lot of noise, less certainty about what to prioritize, whereas at the bottom of this funnel or as an output of the service, you've lower volume, more focus, high signal to noise ratio, and greater certainty that these are true positives that require your attention. This is my last slide, which is just a, a brief project update, and I will have to keep it uh, short. Um, we've been active in two phases this year. So for phase one, we commenced back in January with a select few clients uh, to give us learnings of the onboarding process and the early life service delivery. So we've completed the phase one client deployment and are live with the service. Phase two, we commenced with an expression of interest process back in March to identify clients that were eligible for funding that had a requirement for this service and were able to commence with onboarding this year. So phase two deployment is at an advanced stage and we have a defined schedule for the remainder of this year into next year. In summary, by year end, we will have engaged 16 clients in the onboarding, all of which we target to be live by the end of Q124. Thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'm happy to discuss, obviously, further and take any questions that you, you have. But for now, I'm very happy to, to hand over to Lena from Fox IT. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lena. I'm a project manager in Fox IT. And I kept myself busy with the SOC and SIEM service for the past two, two and a half years. So while Michael was talking about the what and the why, I'm going to talk about the how. Um, I'm going to introduce Fox IT quickly, the service itself, and then I'm going to um, share some experience we had with the onboarding of our clients. Okay. This is Fox IT in a few numbers. I just want to highlight that we were founded in 1999. We're a Dutch company, um, but since 2015, we are part of a bigger group, the NCC group. Within Fox IT alone, we have around 400 employees at the moment. But as we are part of a bigger group, we can work together with 2,500 more. We are active in a lot of countries and various industries, but the educational sector has received quite the focus in the past years, as we are also delivering a similar service to the Dutch educational organizations that are part of SURF and SURF is then the equivalent to HEANET. Let's take a look at the service itself. Um, Michael mentioned a few bits and pieces already. Um, but at the HEA Net client, we have these two components. One is the network sensor, and then the other component is the SIEM, where we then, together with the client, make sure that the log sources send their logs to the Splunk platform. That's this part. Um, for Splunk, it's important to notice that we are working together with our Splunk partner, DaVinci Labs, formerly known as Umbrio. So some of you might have heard of that. Um, and in Splunk, there is a technical add-on that's called the Managed Detection Engine. That's where the magic happens, because this is the place where the, the detection logic um, is located, where the detection rules are. Um, if anything is looking suspicious, an alert is triggered, and that is being sent on to the Cyber Threat Management Platform, the CTMP. That's a platform built by Fox IT. Our SOC analysts have access to that platform, because all the alerts end up there, and they analyze, they see if something is going on. If something needs to be recorded, uh, reported to the clients, it happens in there. So the clients also get access to that platform. So that's the SOC and SIEM service in a nutshell. And um, let's take a look at the service onboarding. As mentioned before, it is a service that consists of two elements. One is the SIEM Splunk part uh, in purple on top. The other part is the network monitoring um, that we do with network sensors. That's the blue part. Um, both parts had roughly the same project and onboarding stages, however, they're slightly different ones. Um, the execution phase is concluded. Without going too much into detail, the whole project is started with a scoping. That means that we, together with the client, determine what's important for the service, what needs to be onboarded during that service onboarding, and just to get a good idea of the infrastructure and what's there. After that, we do have a deployment workshop uh, that's a session where we talk with all involved about what needs to happen and when, and then the real work starts. Um, ideally, in an ideal world, we're looking at a lead time of 12 weeks, so from start to finish, from the moment we have the deployment workshop. But experience has shown that this can be longer um, because the lead time is highly dependent on what we see um, at a client, so the infrastructure, dependencies on third parties, 
things like, um, uh, what, what was the other thing? The, the infrastructure and the resources, of course, so bigger teams tend to um, be more able to get things done quicker. Um, the other thing here on that slide that's important, because it's a service that consists of two elements, uh, we have two parallel onboarding streams. We potentially are looking at two moments of going live with the service. What we do see is that once we're further, further along with the onboarding, that project phases do not align anymore. And then we do have one part that is ready for go live, the other part is not yet. However, then we want to put that part that is ready, live already, to at least give the client some part of the service already. Okay, let's talk about advice. So our experience that we have gained over the past months and years with our um, onboardings in the Netherlands as well. I do not have any technical advice on how to connect log sources or where to best place a network sensor. Still, I have a few things that I'd like to share with you. First, prepare for the service onboarding. That's even before, before you start, but if you're already thinking about um, the service onboarding, that's a good thing, and there are three things that are important. One is inform your teams. Just tell them the what and why, what Micah talked about, because everybody needs to understand why we're doing this, because otherwise there is no commitment. You'd be surprised, often we are surprised, that teams are surprised that this is coming their way. Um, assign a project manager. I know, we know that's not always possible because of resourcing, but it really helps if there's someone at the other side to make things happen. And thirdly, it's very handy if you know your infrastructure and your systems. For us, it's good if you know that, because during the scoping, we want to get a complete picture of what's there to then be able to tell you what should be in scope for the onboarding, for the service. But also for you, it's very handy, just what is there, what needs to be connected. And there are a few technical bits and pieces that can be done to smoothen the onboarding, like if there is a way to automate um, installing of software, for example, that really does help. So that's something to think about before we even start. But then there's something we'd like you to think about for the moment that we go live with the service. So for us as a supplier, if another client goes live, it's basically just another client going live. We have to monitor them, we have to notify them when something is happening. For the client though, it has way more implications. Um, think about an incident re response plan and ideally think about um, the availability the 24-7 availability of staff. We know, also know that this is not always um, possible, especially with the educational sector. And for us, it's not the end of the world. So if you want to call Saturday night because there's a successful hack, we try once, we, tr we try another time. And then maybe even a third time, we inform HEANET if something really bad is going on. But if we cannot reach anybody at the client side, it's not the end of the world for us. For the clients, however, that might be a totally different picture. And then lastly, we would like to ask anybody that wants to do the onboarding to also think ahead, think about developments that are coming your way and to just let us know, work together with us, and then we can together determine if it has any impact on the service to make sure that you get the most out of that service. So to sum it up, there's a lot to, to think about beforehand during the onboarding. Um, but yeah, Patrick from Manus can also talk about that because that was also my last slide. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Lena. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Patrick from Manutha, uh, infrastructure manager there. And I'll try and run quickly through the perspective of ours uh, of onboarding and using this service. Now, what drove us here is probably common to a lot of people, at least to be familiar with it, audit recommendations in terms of socks and seams. Cyber insurance demands of very similar things, and, and to echo Michael's earlier slide, peace of mind, uh, a general feeling that things are secure in the middle of the night can turn into a general feeling that things aren't. Um, this uh, hopefully gives us a little more peace of mind. How did we get to this point? Now, uh, talking about preparation, following on from Lena there, that in last year we started, we decided we were going to use Azure Sentinel as our central syslog. Now, given that we're an Office 365 host, that seemed a very natural choice. Um, charged 
through it. And at the start of this year, we were in a position where we said, Sentinel is it. Everything's in there. If you want to find something, just look, just look. Um, using KQL, whole new programming language and custom querying language, it's not fully intuitive. We had one person who speaks it natively, but I think he was born that way. So, the, the, But it's still very good service and everything inside there. With the, the everything being sent into our service desk as alerts, this brought us to floods and floods and floods of alerts. And the feeling that they're sitting there in your service desk, everybody knows these are massively important and that somebody's going to really do something with it. Oftentimes, nobody does. And my, my, the main point about having uh, a seam is uh, 16 hours a day, nobody's looking at all. It could, anything could be in there. It's just not being used. So there are many seam providers available. There's always uh, different choices. We in Maynooth are using Sentinel and Splunk. You know, others are available. Onboarding. Um, just to lead in, for us, it was a great experience, the onboarding experience. We had two project delivery teams, one from Fox and one from, from, from Maynooth, who were really quite committed to this. Now, it was weekly meetings, but it wasn't a weekly amount of work. You know, this is just to make sure that all the tasks are being hit. We're not seeing logs from these, oh, sorry, that's our bad. Have you got these? No, we're not getting them. There was a lot of back and forth, but it wasn't like you had a whole project team going, I'm only working on this for the next three months. But having the bodies thrown in behind it uh, in, en masse really, really made a difference. And the delivery schedule, as was pitched to us, was uh, this would be 12 weeks. And I was highly skeptical. No, it actually turned out to be 13 weeks, so I did have to eat my words there and thought that that worked just exactly as was planned. But I do put that down to, as I referenced in my previous slide, we had a lot of the preparation done. We'd identified our log sources, so maybe it was easier for us. Um, oh, that turned red, frightened the life out of me. <laughs> so now also as part of the onboarding, we got training in both platforms, both Splunk and, 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 um, and CTMP. Um, Looking back on it, probably more people than needed tried to get involved in the Splunk training, um, and maybe more than needed to have a look at CTMP as well. But uh, yeah, back more on that. So the technical details, obviously I can't go into great detail here. There's a whole conversation about it. But the network sensor, wonderful experience. You tell it what. You tell them what you want, it's delivered, pre-configured, it's plug and play, assuming you've configured your own sensor properly, you know, the, the, but that was not a difficult thing. Server logs, uh, Windows, easy, Linux, less easy, kind of by design and by nature, it doesn't matter what you do with it, I think that's kind of true, but they worked, and uh, actually... I should also mention that ClearPass or ClearPass system logs into it as well. I think that was a little more involved. Peter was involved in getting that bit right, but um, it worked. And after, as we were going through that, there's the fine tuning. You know, uh, as I said, we use Sentinel and Seam. Both those agents decided to duke it out and say, "Hey, I don't know what this guy is. I'm sending you an alert." Um, <laughs> so we ended up a little bit of alert storm from them, but we got on top of that. Um, and then, of course, there's, there's the noise, the background radiation of stuff that seems a bit funny, but isn't, you know, it's, it, we know, or it's funny, but we know about it, that kind of thing. Operational experience. Um, how much does this generate, and how many calls do we end up getting? And when I say calls, I'm talking about the P1s where somebody's on the end of the phone going, I want, I want to talk to a body. Not so many of those. We've had half a dozen, maybe. Uh, uh, we'd call it half a dozen at last count, which over six months is one a month. They weren't, no, some of them actually all happened in, in similar months, so that's okay. Who, when you take on this service, who's managing it? Because it is effectively another service desk 
Um, it doesn't fit naturally with your, your day-to-day service desk. Now, infrastructure team were always the de facto SOC. So, now I say de facto in that we weren't, we, you can't deliver 24 seven and you can't deliver it eight hours a day. But, so it stayed with infrastructure. So all the infrastructure team have visibility of CTMP and take turns responding to whatever needs to be done there. Um, who's on call? Lena did reference this, that from Fox's point of view, they want to get someone at the end of the phone because this is a really important, from their view, it's a high priority ticket. Um, nobody's on call as such. It doesn't fit anyone's contract. Now, we've a, a number of people who, who, who are out of voluntary measures have said, yeah, I'll be available till 8, I'll be available till midnight, I'll be available 24-7. But that, even that doesn't always work out. There's always a reason. You might be at a wedding, I don't know, you might be elsewhere. It's just worth, worth considering, I think. These statistics are probably now back from last month or whatever, but um, you can see that nice filtering going through. And we're not deluged with stuff in CTMP. So if something comes in as it invariably will every other day, you know, you've such a degree of certainty that this is worth looking at. They haven't phoned me, so it's not critical, but it's definitely worth following up. Um, we're finding our way, feeling our way through it at the moment, but really enjoying the, that interaction. And there's a, you know, the nice conversation piece happens through it as well. Mention the dashboards, Splunk interface, it, it's, if you've used it before, it's easy to use. Um, the CTMP interface is very, very, very straightforward. Um, nice mix of user roles. Uh, there's a, your CPR, I think it's called, customer primary representative, which is essentially going to be your change control on this. They're the person who says, yeah, that's okay. You can ignore this in future, that's me. Um, and the availability calendar, as I mentioned earlier, is, is customizable per user. So somebody could say, I'm available to this time, I'm available to others. Ooh, gone too fast. What we really like, um, there are obviously, you get a nice digested monthly report sent to you, which gives you your high level figures, but the quarterly client security reviews that we have with, um, with Fox IT are brilliant. They're already all on our calendar for next year. It's very organized to that, but uh, it's a great deal of confidence when you have that quarterly review with, 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 with a vendor, with a, a provider, um, that they're listening, you know. So after that point, and, and actually I just want to say in the last review there was a very nice back and forth that there were stuff taken on board from, from both directions. So I, I think it, it'll develop well. Where to next? for us as, uh, as a client. Um, additional network sensors seem you know, a must. Um, we, we positioned our sensor between our data center and everything else. Um, for more granularity, we could put another sensor somewhere else and somewhere else. Um, and who knows, there might actually be a sensor, a V sensor that we'd want to put between our uh, various cloud elements. The next point I think is really, really, really important. Continued development of cyber posture. This service has filled a gap and ticked a box that we get. Somebody's looking at our logs and their related, their relationships 24 seven and, and are, are reacting to the ones that are important enough by either logging a ticket to us or making a phone call. But that's, that's just alerting. There's still a whole lot more that, that, that can and will be done in it. And we keep both seams in use um, because Sentinel offers us a very rich experience independent of, of just cyber. Um, there's no reason. You don't have to abandon what you have. They're, they're perfectly compatible. You know, there's a, sometimes they do different jobs for you. And gosh. Either I finished too early or somebody else did. I feel like I got a minute and a half over. No, listen, um, listen thank you for listening. Uh, I'm more than happy to discuss this at, at length at a bar or over coffee. So, uh, at a bar, did I mention that? And, um, so, brilliant. Thank you.
So, oops, that was very loud, sorry. Uh, gosh. So we do have a little bit of time for Q&A, and you can either step up to one of the mics, I think, or the mic will be provided to you if you put your hand up, or you can use Slido uh, with the, it's the hashtag of HGNet2023 there on Slido. So we do, we do have a question, so we're, we're going to go with this. Um, so out of the 150 potential security incidents reported to the clients, and understanding, of course, on ongoing onboarding and learning, but what was the percentage of false positives? Yeah, so uh, I could take that, Brian. Um, so when the SOC is doing the investigation, they're trying to determine false positives up front as part of the investigation. So if they determine false positives, obviously they won't then in that case report the case to the client. So the 150 um, cases were concluded that either it was a security incident or it could potentially be a security incident. If the SOC couldn't explain what was going on or there was nothing in the security policy provided by the client to say, you know, this is part of our administrative uh, tasks uh, or whatever. Um, so I don't have a sense of it where it was reported to the client and the client follows up and investigates themselves there would definitely be a, a portion of those that would have concluded on the client side as false positives. But just to give you another sense of it, though, of those 150 cases that were reported, very, very few would have actually involved a phone call. They were all, uh, 150 cases were all priorities, high to low. Uh, so they're all reported to the client, but I think it's only about six we see or something like that uh, per, per month across the client base uh, that involves a, an actual phone call. Okay. The lights are very bright, so if somebody has their hand up, I can't see, unfortunately. Um, but just while we're, we're maybe waiting for somebody to ask another question, um, if, to the three of you, kind of briefly, if you had, you know, knowing what you know now, if you go back to the start of either the, the team or the onboarding or indeed starting to work with, with HEA in it, if you had a magic wand, is there one thing you could kind of cause everyone to know or, or to, to make happen differently? I know you touched on some of this in your talks. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, I think Lena did cover off uh, some of the, the lessons learned, but um, I think for bigger deployments with, with more complexity, um, we've seen that there can be reliance on third parties where some of our clients are using managed services providers. Uh, one of the learnings is definitely to engage those early because uh, it doesn't work on a change request basis where you're reliant on third parties to do things in a, in a timely manner. Um, so that would be one for me to engage them early, bring them in and get them involved in the project and not just ask for specific uh, changes uh, during the project. That would be my one. Yeah, I think I um, talked about most of the things during my presentation, but it is indeed constantly busy with updating the documentation we have to also help clients to prepare for the onboarding, to give them all the information they need to tell them things they should ideally implement before they even start with the service onboarding. Mm. I don't know. Okay. Um, no, that's fair enough. Um, so we've got two more questions. We're going to answer those, and then we're then we're going to going to uh, finish up. Uh, so first off, what's the the human effort in FTE equivalent currently required for SOC and SIEM in Maynooth University? Okay, so that's a good question. And the, the, the FTE question comes up an awful lot when we're doing uh, project proposals. Uh, what will you need in FTE? Is, does that mean? days, people, whatever. But um, as I mentioned, so we've got a team of people who are hooked into CTMP as, as in another alerting mechanism. We're not deluged with alerts from that particular mechanism. So, you know, if everybody's on that once a day, just doing a quick check, that would be as much. Um, if in a larger um, seam environment, there's there's much more required, we'll say, from um, the Microsoft Defender portal, which is it's like a seam after its own fashion, but that's broader spread than just infrastructure, involves a lot of user support uh, engagement. So the SOC element, 
is is negligible. It's just another thing. We'll, if you want an FTE, we'll call it one or twenty percent of one week. <laughs> uh, um, but that would be it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. And so our our last question is: We, we do need to move on uh, uh, with the the other parts of the conference. Can't just talk about this all day. Fascinating and all as it is. Um, what are three expectations from a development experience point of view that you expect from a SOC and SEAM provider? So. Oh, that's going, I guess, to, to what, me? <laughs> <laughs> well, yourself or, and Michael, possibly. Yeah. Um, well, for me, um, I mean, uh, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, yeah, development experience, sorry. Um, just observation, and I suppose I have the benefit of, you know, sort of being on the supplier side from the HEA net side, um, but working with Fox IT, the SOC is very, very strong. So very, very strong SOC. The analysts are very, very good. Uh, the um, reporting that they provide uh, includes a lot of detail in the analysis of the security incident, um, and the guidance provided on the next step containment and remediation actions are very, very good as well. Um, so, so that's, uh, I suppose, one thing um, very good. SOC analyst, because it's in the name, it's important, right? Um, but also the development of additional um, detection use cases. Um, Fox IT have been very good at engaging where they see new use cases that they haven't encountered before. And it's important to mention that the majority of log sources that the clients have, Fox IT know already they're able to onboard easily and they already have detection use cases for. But there have been new ones that have come up for the Irish education sector and where it is deemed to be um, advantageous for the sector to have this detection capability, Fox IT engage and, and develop that for us. So that's only two I can think of. Sorry, I can't yeah, think of a third. Just, just to add to that, Michael, that for, at, a, at a level below that, we need to have a really high level of confidence that what we see is is completely valid. That, it, that means the system is working. So if that confidence was shook, we're at a loss. But so when, when something's alerted to us, we know this is a today piece. It's not a few days from now. That's just my thing. OK, great stuff. Thank you very much. So it just falls to me to thank our three speakers and panelists this morning. So Michael Clerken, Vina Eiserman, and Patrick O'Regan. Um, thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now, it's meet the sponsor time. If, the, if you could come a little bit more onto the stage. So, you, uh, for, for those of you who are familiar with this format, our sponsors get 30 seconds, no more, not a second more, not a second less, to give a, a, a little elevator pitch on who they are. We have a fantastic exhibition uh, uh, area outside, so please go and meet, meet our providers. They're, they're essential for... Um, making this the success that it is. So, we are going to start first with Vault 365. You start in two, one, go. Madam White, Gok Dena, Fergal Amiakonis Anandom, introducing Vault 365 at Stand 1, a 100% Irish cooperation powered by Gartner's number one in backups, Veeam. Vault 365 combines storage, cyber defense, all managed in simple monthly consumption model making for a comprehensive cloud backup BAS and RAS solution. Say goodbye to downtime and hello to peace of mind and a good sleep. Trust to safeguard your data and keep your organization running smoothly. Please join us for worry-free futures. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Sean Hulhan Vedenda. Look at Irish distributor representing companies such as Logitech, Team Zoom, and Google Solutions, um, Avacar Interactive Screens, Immersive Active Learning, and uh, other technologies. Co call to us, Stand 22. Hybrid education is probably a buzzword everyone uses, but look at loads of technology there to solve your requirements. So thanks, everyone, and enjoy the. Thank enjoy. you. Next up, Agile. Your 30 seconds starts now. Hi, everyone. Uh, Ronan McCarthy from Juniper Networks, standing in for Sean Nolan from Agile. 
Juniper Networks is global number one in enterprise networking, wired and wireless, global number one in location-based services. Using that technology, working with Agile and our open SDK, uh, SDK architecture, we're enabling better student outcomes, integration with your student applications, and actually providing a much better student well-being, student retention, and student safety experience on campus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Tell. Your 30 seconds starts now. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is John O'Callaghan, and I'm part of the education team with Dell Technologies. Uh, we sponsored the drinks last night, so you can blame, you can blame us for, uh, for any hangovers this morning. Um, but look, uh, we're delighted to be here today, and I look forward to meeting as many of you as possible over the next couple of days. Um, today is all about embracing yeah. new ideas um, and using technology to reach their potential. We see five, five key areas. Four, That's AIB, three, two, <laughs> AI, cyber, one. multi- Cut the mic. Beryl, wriggle. Wriggle up next. Good morning, all. Uh, my name is Beryl Furlong from Riggle. I'm hoping I won't have the wrath of Garvin's buzzer, so I'm going to be very quick. Uh, Riggle is an Apple authorized reseller, authorized education reseller on the HEA framework. Delighted to be here. Apple launched some fabulous new products last week with their new M3 chip, which are going to be the fastest Macs you've ever seen. Uh, we're here with our partner, Jamf. You all manage your Windows devices using Intune, I'm sure, and we have a great solution for managing the Mac devices in your enterprise, which is really, really TikTok, important now. TikTok. Uh, thank you, Garvin. So please come and talk to us. Uh... Next up, Telcom. Go. Morning, everyone. Uh, Shane Tully from Telcom. Um, okay, so Telcom are an internet service provider. We're a voice and UC expert, uh, specialising in Microsoft Teams phone solutions. Um, we're a very engineering focused company. Telcom specialises in integrating your Microsoft Teams environment and phone system Tick. to enable a Talk. feature rich Tick. UC experience. Talk. Need to discuss anything Microsoft Teams? Talk. Give us a show. Cheers. <laughs> Next up, Strata. Elysium Banner, Salesforce. Slate, Workday, we, and cybersecurity. We offer professional consulting services. We're here to serve and invest in higher education in Ireland. Strata Information Group, Stand 13. Come see me. Woohoo! Excellent. Okay, next up, we have 40Net. Go. Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Niall Dunn. I'm a regional sales manager for Fortinet. Uh, we're at Stand 28. Uh, we do things other than firewalls, so please come talk to us at Stand 28. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next up, Aurora. Woo! Good People have all. been practicing hard. Excellent stuff. Yeah. Good morning, okay, all. Good. My name is James Freeman. I'm the design manager for Aurora Telecom. It's great to be here today uh, to show our support with HGNet and our drive for connectivity. Aurora provides a number of dark fiber circuits for HGNet across the country. In the recent years, we've expanded our network to exceed over 1,200 kilometers. And we hope that this enables us to deliver more and more for HNet and their growth for connectivity. Uh, our network is one of the most secure and reliable in the country due to our uh, sister company being Gas Networks Ireland. Uh, and being next. Uh, Tick. <laughs> next up, Integrity 360. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Stephen Phillips, uh, Public Sector Lead for Integrity 360. Um, we are the only pure play end to end cyber business in Ireland dealing with uh, all areas of NIST. CIS controls base two standards around identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. We also work with HEA Net on lot eight Ten. for MDR services, um, and we also have some fantastic partners with us on, on, Five, on the stand today four, XM and Mindcast. Three, out. Two. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, so, select should have been next, but maybe the, the threat of this was too much of us, they couldn't make it. Uh, next up, Lucian. Go. Good morning, everyone. My name is Selena, and I'm from Elucian. Uh, we help deliver institutional success and empower student success. We have about 3,000 universities around the world using Elucian solutions. Closer to home, 90% of the universities in Ireland use Elucian solutions. You'll know us Ten. probably most commonly for Banner, but we are much more than Banner. So please come Five, and speak to myself four, and Faye. Three. Thank you. Okay, next up, Ergo Microbell. 
Um, my name is Simon Daly. I'm here with Ergo. I'm currently the Commercial Director for Modern Workplace and my colleague Sheila McMahon, the Director for Public Sector, will be at Stand 2 if you'd like to drop out and see us. We're Ireland's largest Indigenous IT services provider, partnered with Public Sector and Education for 30 years, alongside Micromail, which are part of the Ergo Group, and they're the exclusive supplier of M365 okay. and Azure licensing to the HDANA. Ergo have the number one Irish partner for education recognised by Microsoft Five, locally and four, globally three, in a competition with 4,000 people. Stand two as a... Cut the mic. Next up, VEI Global. Hi, my name's Bill Kenny from VEI Global. We partner with Aruba for SD-WAN Wi-Fi projects, CradlePoint on 4G and 5G installations, Cato Networks on security, and Stella Doradus on GSM boosting. We're an Irish-owned company based in NACE. We do work in, for companies like Ten. BT uh, in a lot of the universities as our partner. Thanks very much. Thank you. <laughs> Next up, HPE Aruba. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, Ray O'Connor. I think I know a lot of you in the room already. Uh, coming to this event for, I think, about 100 years at this stage. Um, we are the leading provider of networking solutions to higher education in Ireland, with the largest install base across the country, with the likes of TU Dublin, ATU, TUS, DCU, Manute, Atla, and so on and so forth. Um, we're in the stand over at the right-hand corner. Please come talk to us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Next up, Legal Island. Legal Island is the leading provider of online compliance training. We're delighted to be working in partnership with CHEA Net over a number of years now. They offer you, their members, reduced rates. Um, on our e-learning training on our compliance platform. We have quotas in data protection and cyber security. Um, we currently work with many of you in the room today, so we'd be happy to have a chat with you today if you stop by our stand. Ten. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. HP. Hi, you doing? I'm Paul Kane. I'm the Public Sector Lead for HP in Ireland. Um, come talk to us about the technology that's delivered 35 billion uh, web views and documents without any incidents. Also talk to our new poly colleagues that just joined HP formally since the first of the month. Uh, so Conrad's on stand there. Okay. We also have Neil from HP and Avril as well. Look forward to talking to you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Fox IT. You can start any time you like. Go on. This is the power of silence. Okay. <laughs> because when you're ransomware or when you're hacked, it's going to be very silent. And after that, they're going to call you for some money. So if you want to prevent, visit Fox IT. We're over there at the back. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next up, Anthology. Hi, I'm Martin from Anthology. Uh, two years ago, we merged with Blackboard to form the organization we are today. We offer products across the entire student life cycle, from Anthology Reach, our Microsoft C uh, Dynamics-based CRM package, Blackboard Learn Ultra, our VLE, Anthology Students, our student record system. With those products and others in our portfolio of 60 plus tools, we have 150 million users worldwide. We'd love to work with more of you. Come and see us at our stand in the exhibition area. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next up, Cisco. Morning, folks. Uh, Colin Buckley is my name, public sector lead with Cisco Systems. We're over at Stand 5. Come and have a chat with us around campus networking and Wi Fi, how we can secure your campus, make it smart, but also our Microsoft Teams device with native integration. Talk to us about um, our uh, Meraki Wi Fi and how it's helping ETBs, but also how to win uh, a Lego McLaren Formula One car. If I still have time, I like long walks on the beach, I like holding hands <laughs> and fireside dinners. Like puppies. Lovely to meet you. Have a great day. Thank you very much. Next up, Tata Consultancy Services. Good morning, everyone. Tata Consultancy Services, or TCS for short, are delighted to be at this conference for the very first time. So we're a global IT services consulting and business solutions organization partnering with all the leading technology providers. Um, over 600,000 people globally, 1,300 here in Ireland, where we've been based since 2001. Damn. So we're, not new to the com we're new to the conference, but we're not new to Ireland. Um, and we have many, many customers uh, Talk. servicing Talk. many different industries. In Cut the mic. Thank you. Next up, Demovo. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tim Porter. I'm from Demovo. Uh, we are a managed ICT services provider specializing in voice, uh, integration with Microsoft Teams, uh, data networking. We're a, an extreme partner. Um, and cybersecurity. We have a fully fledged cybersecurity division, Lara's, offering uh, consultancy, threat detection, um, penetration testing, red teaming, purple teaming, and all of that good stuff. And we have donuts, and we're on stand five. Thank you. Excellent. OK, we have a couple of extras on the list. So next up, Panopto. Hi everyone, I'm Stacey Revel from Panopto, here together with my colleague Celia. 
Um, so we're here today um, to talk about the uh, Panopto video learning environment. Uh, so Panopto is really easy to use. So it simplifies recording video, managing that video, and publishing it out to any VLE and Ten. any device. Panopto also integrates with Microsoft Teams and Zoom, so you can record all of your, Five, all of your classes, four, meetings, three, into our single two, content solution. One. Come and see us. Admin by request. Okay. La second last. La Admin right. by request. Go. I'll keep this short and sweet, like myself. Um, my name's Luke. I'm from Admin by Request. Uh, we are a PAM solution which provides just the right amount of admin in just the right amount of time. We're highly scalable, easy to deploy, and we work on Windows, Mac, and Linux workstations and servers. Uh, we're working in partnership with HEANET and Renaissance to bring Admin by Request to all educational establishments in Ireland. Drop by the stand later to receive your special offer. Thank you. Good to see you. And last but not least, Elastic. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Trevor. I'm from a company in Kinsale and County Cork called Elasnik Computer Networks. Um, we specialise in school and college, everything under one umbrella. So from all Wi-Fi and internal infrastructures to looking after students directly, lectures, different departments. Um, we sell, we service, we repair, we maintain. Ten. So we're in stand number 20. If anyone would like to come to talk to us, we'd be delighted to meet you guys. Take Thank you. Talk. Thank you very much. Okay, excellent. If you could all, a, a good bula bus for our uh, sponsors there, fantastic. Please go talk to them, go see them. It's fantastic. Have a great conference. Take care.